Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Big Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. After over 15 years, Princess Peach is finally getting her own game again where she's the star of the show, but today we're checking out the original Super Princess Peach that was released in 2006 for the Nintendo DS. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about here, from unused graphics to even some unused areas. So go grab a parasol and smack that like button below. It's time to find some Super Princess Peach Lost Bits. Alright, so to kick things off here, let's first have a look at some pre-release screenshots of the game that reveal a few changes that were made between an earlier point in development and the final release. First and foremost, obviously the biggest change here is that the screens were flipped, with the gameplay set to appear on the bottom screen and Peach's reactions on top, instead of the opposite as is seen in the final version. Peach's design here also looks much different, it's certainly not as basic as some other placeholder graphics we've seen on this series over the years, but compared to what it looks like in the final version, yeah, it definitely got a nice overhaul and getting rid of the bland solid green background seen here was a nice decision too. And I guess, this originally being on the top screen meant that it would basically just act as a simple heads up display to display Peach's emotions, and this, at least from a gameplay perspective, is much different than how the screen works in the final version, where you can tap the different hearts on the bottom screen to change Peach's vibe. And interestingly enough, having Peach on the top screen was kept as the plan, at least up until November of 2004, where in a very short snippet we can still see her on the top screen here, albeit with updated artwork and a better looking background. And then, even after the idea was changed to how the heart mechanic ended up being implemented on the bottom screen in the final cut, in this pre-release screenshot we can also see some different designs for the heart faces. Now in general, the early designs just look a lot more expressive, the yellow heart is the most similar, the blue heart seems to be in a lot more pain here, the green heart has a much bigger grin, and then the red heart's face appears to have underwent the biggest overhaul as it looks quite a bit different. Anyways, going back to the earliest known screenshots again, now looking at the bottom screen, first, in addition to Peach's sprite having a different, almost chibi looking design, we can also see this early version of the first Fury Volcano stage, as well as a grassy stage of some sort where for some reason flying cheap cheeps would appear. Now it's believed that these may have all been from the same stage, based on them sharing the same background graphic, but I think it's also likely that they just used this background as a placeholder since although it fits for the grassy stage, yeah, not so much for the volcano stages. Then also in this screenshot we can see this heart door which I don't believe goes used anywhere in the final game, and this appears to have been a way for Peach to transition between the areas here instead of the warp pipes. And in these screenshots we can also see some early UI graphics for the coin counter, this, what I think was for the three toads you have to find in each level, but some have also considered this to be an early version of the vibe gauge. And finally the hearts are much different here, being quite a bit smaller. Now personally, from these screenshots, I could be wrong, but I don't see any indication that the vibe mechanic had even been implemented yet at this point, especially with there being no obvious way to activate it either without the use of the DS's touchscreen. Anyways, next up we have an early screenshot of the level select screen, and once again the screens are seen flipped here. And in addition to Perry being completely visible here instead of just the top as is seen in the final, we also get to see an early version of the background for Gleam Glacier that looks quite a bit different. Although the snow fellas are still here, albeit in different spots, this old version has the crystals a lot more visible and there are also some purple ones here not seen in the final version of the screen. And of course the background behind everything appears much different as well. Now what's extra interesting is that the text on the bottom here shows that of the third world, Shriek Mansion, and as such it's possible that the UI graphics just hadn't been made up for this world yet at this point in development, so they may have just reused that as a placeholder. Then lastly for the pre-release stuff, there are two more early screenshots, this time from a later point in development. The first of these shows Peach running and crying, and her tears are seen as large, more opaque orbs, and she's also holding her arms out, similar to her flying animation, instead of holding them to her face, as is seen in the final cut. Now these more opaque orbs didn't get completely scrapped though, as they appear to be the same as the tears seen in the King Boo boss fight. 
And then secondly, there's also this screenshot where the only thing of note here is that the design of the party ball here is slightly different. Now finally moving along to unused content actually left over in the final cut of the game. First, there's a lone audio track that goes unused. And this is a calm version of the music heard in the pre-boss fight rooms throughout the game. The calm vibe is only attainable when taking some damage and since you always start out in these rooms with full health without any way to actually take damage, yeah, this variation is never normally called. Anyways, let's give this unused track a quick listen. <laughs> Now next up, let's take a look at some of the various unused graphics that are left over in Super Princess Peach here, the first of which actually reveals some bosses that were scrapped. And these bosses are actually none other than the seven Koopalings, Larry, Morton, Wendy, Iggy, Roy, Lemmy, and Ludwig. Now each of these Koopalings have leftover sprites for various animations including idle animations, attacks, and more. And although nowadays the Koopalings are seen more often in games such as Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, etc., this would have been only like their fifth appearance in the entire series or something. And their order of appearance in this game would have apparently followed that of Super Mario World or Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. Iggy was going to be the boss of World 1, followed by Morton, Lemmy, Ludwig, Roy, Wendy, and finally Larry. Now it's unclear why the decision was made to scrap these Koopalings from the game, especially considering how much work was already done on them. But it's possible that their fights were all deemed a bit too similar and the developers ultimately wanted the boss fights to have a bit more diversity. Although I would have definitely liked to see these fellas here, the variety of bosses that we did get in the game is pretty nice too. Anyways, next up we have some unused sprites of some flowers and a butterfly, and the art style of these looks very similar to that seen in Yoshi's Island games, and also speaking of Yoshi's Island, there's this sprite of a chomp rock from that game which goes unused here as well. Next up we have this unused sprite of a stack of papers, there's this set of sprites for the skulls seen in the game's boss fights, and here we can see what appears to be a scrapped animation, where the skulls would seemingly flash and change from red to black, as in the final game the skulls just fade out as they spin towards the screen. We also got some unused sprites for the puzzle pieces where they can be seen glowing, and this isn't ever seen in the game as they just rotate and then disappear after being collected. Then next we got some unused sprites for a couple of unused enemy types including two different Goomba types that were scrapped a green variant as well as a yellow type. Now the final version of Super Princess Peach sees sad and mad Goombas in blue and red respectively, so following that pattern and just noting their facial expressions here, it looks like the yellow Goombas would have been the glad Goombas and the green ones would have been calm Goombas. The glad Goombas would have seemingly just hopped and flopped around all happy like, while the calm Goombas would kinda just sleep. It's, again, unclear why these different Goomba variants were cut, but just based on them also seemingly being early designs of the Goomba sprites seen in the game, it looks like these might have been cut earlier on in development. And then lastly, for the unused enemies here, we also have leftover sprites for the Goonie enemies, once again from Yoshi's Island. And this time, these are actually identical to the graphics from the Super Mario Advance 3 version of the game. And interestingly, Goonie skeletons can be seen in the minigame leading up to the boss of World 5, so it's possible and likely that these were meant to be seen in World 5 as well, it being a beach themed world and all. Alright, so we chatted about some of this game's pre-release content, and I hope you aren't sick of early graphics and such, as there are actually quite a few more early and unused graphics left over in the game too. First, for Princess Peach herself, we have several early sprites, and if you look closer, you can notice at least a few different designs for her here, with this last one obviously appearing the most different, even compared to the rest here. Next up, we have some early sprites of Toad jumping, and here, not only is he seen brighter, but the vest is also lacking a few finer details. 
And then similarly, there are also some unused early sprites of Luigi, knocking against the bubble thing he gets trapped in. Here we can once again see some brighter coloring, and additionally there's yet another sprite of him here that doesn't appear to be used anywhere in the final game at all. Next, we talked about the other unused Goomba types earlier, but there's also this early design of them in their typical color scheme too. And similarly, there are also some early designs of a small and large Boo. Then we also got early graphics of the question mark used as an icon for an unavailable item, the tough coffee item. There's an early version of the back icon with the word back written on it in Japanese, and this was changed to a simple reverse arrow. And then there's this early graphic of the Japanese title logo for the game, where the most notable difference is the super part of the graphic being up here on the left, instead of the middle as it's seen in the final cut of the Japanese release. And then, one more character that has some early graphics left over is none other than Bowser, where there are actually early sprites of his regular in-stage appearance, as well as for his final phase, where he grows and appears in the background. Now across the board, these appear to be less detailed compared to the final sprites, lacking their finer shading and such. And much like some of the other early graphics, the colors appear brighter here, and even the scepter here looks a bit different too. The bigger sprites of Bowser here especially look a lot more similar to the old, more simple looking Peach design that we saw back in the early screenshots of the game too. Then, in addition to all of these early Bowser sprites, this sprite sheet also has some unused placeholder graphics tucked away here too, including the numbers 1 through 7, drawn rather crudely, as well as these two Japanese characters. Now, separately, these apparently translate to book and body, but apparently together they translate to main body, and I suppose the latter would make more sense in the context of Bowser's main body on the sprite sheet here. Next, I mentioned the heart door seen in the early screenshot earlier, but it looks like there are a few more door styles that went unused too, each seemingly meant for a respective area in the game. Then next up, there's another sprite sheet with a whole bunch of unused backgrounds for pretty much every area in the game, and there's also the forest looking one that we saw in the early screenshots earlier. In the interest of time, I won't go over all of them in detail here, but I'll show a bunch of them for you on screen for a bit. And then similarly to the Bowser sprite sheet, this one too has some nifty stuff hidden in here as well. For starters, there are several of these color wheel things in different color orders, or inverted horizontally, or vertically. Now honestly, I can't say I have any idea what these are used for, but if you might know, please let us know down in the comments. And then there's also two more images here, one of some programmer art of a hill or something with a purple sun, uh, whatever this thing is, honestly kind of looks like it's bleeding or something. And then we also have some Japanese text here, which apparently translates to bald. I can only assume referring to the hill lacking trees or bushes and not a person without hair. And then the second image hidden in the sprite sheet is what appears to be a placeholder texture with some more Japanese text on it. Now I tried my best to translate this, but to no avail. So I hit up my pal Nintendo and he was actually able to help translate this message. The top text seems to translate to engineering one and then the bottom bits of text translate to Peach and Mario respectively. So it almost seems like it's a message from Peach and Mario, though I'm not quite sure what Engineering 1 has to do with anything. Maybe these sprites were made up by an engineering team number one at the dev studio or something? I don't know, if you have any other theories on this one, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. And these actually aren't the only dev messages hidden in sprite sheets either, as the sprite sheet for the goal ring contains some placeholder art of the numbers 1 through 3 and two different line formations. And then hidden in a few image files is also this bit of text with the top apparently translating to empty area and the bottom translates to swap area. Then other placeholder images include this graphic that translates to goal ring temp. There are these two similar looking graphics, one labeled OBJ and one Cell, and we can see the shapes and colors kind of like swap places on the left side between the two here. 
Then we got placeholder sprites that actually form an animation, where we can see the 1D and the number 32 move away from each other, not really sure what this could have been a placeholder for. And then finally, there are also a whopping total of 8 really basic looking placeholder character designs. And these are apparently placeholders for Peach as she appears on the DS's bottom screen. Honestly, we got a pretty good variety of placeholder graphics in this game. A little bit of basic artwork, some developer text, love it. And now lastly for the unused graphics, exclusive to the Japanese release of the game, are actually several textures and models left over that are apparently related to Densetsu no Stafi 4, or The Legend of Starfy 4, which was developed by the same studio that worked on this game. Now these textures include a squish texture of Starfy looking pretty corrupted, there's this happy face texture, and if you happen to like happy face textures, don't worry, we also got this, this, and this texture. Yeah. These are pretty unsettling, especially this one. Having the word one skin tattooed on a forehead is one thing, but the four eyes here is really something else. Now these creepy looking textures are meant for three ninjas in their respective colors called Ninja, Ninja 2, and Ninja 5, with the missing numbers likely being other colors. Then other models and textures that are left over unused in both Super Princess Peach here and Densetsu no Stafi 4 include a large cube, a chair, a whole ass airplane model, not sure how that would relate to either of the games that this is left over in, a disc, a mallet, a model of a human, textures and a model for Bone Bone, and then there are also several 3D models that offer a panoramic view of Starfy, some enemies, as well as the terrain around them. Now I assume these were early versions of the 3D views of the areas seen in Densetsu no Stafi 4, but it's pretty interesting that these and all the other 3D models are left over in Super Princess Peach, considering the game is basically entirely 2D. And now, last up for this video, in addition to all of that stuff, Super Princess Peach also has a total of 11 unused maps left over in the game, all of which can still be loaded into and are still fully functional. First up, we have the biggest test area, and this appears to be the main one of the bunch, as from here you can actually get to a few of the others as well, so it's kind of like a hub area of sorts. This room appears to have been used for testing a bunch of stuff, from breaking blocks, fighting Koopas, there are some spikes here that don't appear to be placed properly, as well as a lone party ball up here. There are also a whole lot of pipes here on the bottom, and only two of the ones that are raised up actually work. And these actually just take you up to the middle-ish part of the map, and it looks like the animation for Peach going through the pipes here wasn't implemented yet, as you can see her kinda just phase through the pipe sideways here awkwardly. And then there's also this area with three marked pipes up here, and these will each lead you to another respective test room, and we'll cover all of these shortly. On that note, the second test map basically just contains a whole whack load of crying sad Goombas. And when I say whack load, I mean there's enough here that it actually severely impacts the game's performance. There's also a bit of a maze section here, but it basically just leads to a dead end here, which since we can't fit through the top, that's basically it. Bamboozling the dozens of Goombas here is always a great time though. The next test room features a pair of doors, and these appear to just have been testing the door functionality of transporting Peach between them. And then, more interestingly, beneath these blocks here is some terrain with the mechanic that's seen in the game where if you cry by using the sad vibe on top of it, it will actually freeze up. And this then lets you hit these blocks and make them slide on the ice, and this can then break the large ice blocks seen in this level. The following test room is also pretty similar, featuring another pink block, more ice blocks, as well as that same terrain strip that can be frozen. The only problem this time around though is that there's actually no way to get Peach's tears on the terrain to freeze it, so it doesn't look like this stage's puzzle is beatable in this state, unfortunately. The next test room is a pretty simple test of the slide brella mechanic of hooking onto and traversing along the floating rails. It's nothing too crazy, and at the end of this room you'll basically just get stuck on the edge of the screen here. Then following this is a small test room with some floating spikes, a trampoline, a ball, a large block, and of course some lava here. 
And you can pick up all of the objects on the left here, so I suppose this might have been a test room for picking up objects? Next we have the seventh test room, and this one is filled with a bunch of blocks, a variety of enemies including Goombas, Koopas, and even Hammer Brothers. And there's also quite a few party balls here too. But what's extra interesting about this test room though is that it also contains a partially visible goalpost at the end, and triggering it will actually still result in you completing the stage. And that's not even it, the most bizarre part is that doing this will actually bring you to World Zero, which although it's seen located apparently to the left of Wave Beach on the world map, here it's just a blank screen. The empty void and lack of any music here makes this feel like some sort of cursed personalized copy of the game or something. Anyways, on a lighter note, the 8th test stage features an exclamation mark block and hitting it causes these blocks to appear in the outline sections. There's this hill where the tiling seems definitely unfinished, and apparently, despite looking similar to other blocks in the game that can be destroyed, these are an unused block type that differs in that they're actually indestructible. Now moving on to the ninth test room, we got a pretty interesting one, as it's actually a battle against Iggy Koopa. Well, almost. Unfortunately, it isn't much of a fight at all, as the fight is almost instantly over as soon as the ball that spawns above Iggy drops onto him, and after it does, you'll rescue another Toad, and after getting a blank cutscene of Perry having a dream, you get taken back to Area Zero. Although it was cool to see Iggy in-game for a few blinks of an eye, I really wish that this room had offered us an actual opportunity to see and experience the battle against him. Then, for the second last test room, we start out in a section with a ball object, as well as these two floating purple objects which will appear every couple seconds which are normally seen in Bowser's Villa. And then there's also this pipe to the right here, but unfortunately it's non-functional, so yeah, that's basically it for this one. And then finally we have the last test room which appears to be using an early less detailed tile set for the terrain here. There's yet another pipe on the right side that isn't functional, big surprise. And then the star of this room is this happy face water wheel object, which you can still interact with by using the sad vibe near it. Peach's tears will cause it to spin really fast, and this will reveal a message. A loud noise came from somewhere. Since this test room is pretty small, nothing really seems to change here, but I guess this was meant to test a mechanic where activating this wheel would cause a door or something to open up somewhere. Now overall, although most of these test rooms were rather small, I think they were still pretty fun to mess around in. It was a good mix of quality and quantity here. And if you've been watching my videos for a while now, you know I love me my test rooms, so personally, I had a good time goofing around in these. And that about wraps it up for Super Princess Peach, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.